We are looking at stress and intonation today. There's a difference between stress and intonation, and it all goes to the rhythm or the sound of the language. Different languages have different stresses and intonation, and so they sound different. And if you just don't listen to the words that I'm saying, but just listen to the tone of my voice, da 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 don't listen to the words I'm saying, just listen to the tone of my voice. You can hear my voice going up and down, and sort of also a neutral note. You can also hear some words are stressed and said clearly. Other words are squished together and not said very clearly at all. If I just say, my name is Mary, my name is Mary, my name is Mary, you can hear, my name is Mary. My name is Mary. That is the stress of a sentence. And that gives you the idea of what syllables to stress, because Mary is two syllables, but Mare is stressed more than re. Mary. So that gives you an idea of how important the syllable stress of a word is to the sound and the rhythm of the sentence. Intonation is different because that can convey meaning. So for example, if I say, do you want to come with me? Do you want to come with me? My voice going up at the end makes you want to come with me. And if I say, do you want to come with me? That has a totally different meaning. Uh-oh, you're in trouble. Do you want to come with me? So the intonation conveys meaning, and it also gives signals to the listener. So we are going to be talking about stress and intonation because they go together, but this will be very helpful for you to understand other people, as well as for you when you're speaking, to know what to emphasize, to know what not to emphasize, and how important it is when your voice goes up and down. We'll be focusing on regular sentences as well as questions. So, here we go. Here's some examples. Think of music. The tone of your voice goes a little bit higher on a stressed syllable. Here's an example. She saw a cat. She saw a cat. She saw a cat. Say it with me. She saw a cat. She saw a cat. She saw a cat. Really simple. But that just gives you an idea of the voice going up and the voice going down. Remember that a T at the end of a word is not said. It's unstressed. So it sounds like she saw a cat. Cat. The vowel is stretched a little bit more, but the T is silent. She saw a cat. Next one. I'm from China. I'm from China. I'm from China. Say that. I'm from China. I'm from China. And now practice saying your own country. I'm from Canada. Where are you from? Right. Uh, so let's look at asking questions because sometimes that is a little bit confusing. Some people think that your voice has to go up at the end of a question, but that's not always the case. Here's an example. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? You can hear that this, the voice is going down at the end of a sentence. So let's look at why exactly this is. And what does it mean when the voice goes down at the end of a sentence? As we saw, native speakers use three regular musical notes constantly in normal speaking. There's a high note on the stressed syllable of the important word. Those are content words. Important words are nouns. Main verbs not auxiliary verbs, not help verbs, and not the verb be, but a verb where you can actually imagine an action verb like walk, think, eat, drink. Those are all verbs that you can get a picture in your mind of somebody doing it. But if somebody says, 
I am, am is a verb, but it has no meaning on its own. So we have nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and negatives. All of these are important words. They're content words. So the stressed syllable in the important words are a little bit higher, a little bit louder. All the other syllables, the non-stressed syllables, so if you think of the word potato, 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 the p and do are not stressed, but the t is the stressed syllable. So the stressed syllable is said at a higher note, but the other syllables and the non-important words are said at a middle note. All of the other syllables are not stressed, and the unimportant words, words that are not nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and negatives, are not stressed, and they sort of get squished onto that important beat. Also, we want to remember that at the end of our sentences, the voice goes down. We saw that, I'm from China, voice goes down. That voice going down is kind of like a period in writing. It tells the listener that you're finished talking. And it also appears at the end of a question that is asking about information. Who, what, where, when, why, how. Those kinds of questions are information questions. And when you're asking an information question, your voice goes down at the end of your question. It's a little different if you're asking a yes-no question, and we'll look at that in a minute. So just as a review, we'll look at these simple sentences, say them with me, and stress and maybe move your hand the same as I'm doing so that you can get the exact rhythm. She saw a cat. She saw a cat. Next one. I'm from China. I'm from China. And our inf information question, what time is it? What time is it? Great. Now we're going to be looking at a little matching game. We've got some patterns up here at the top, either a two-syllable pattern or a three-syllable pattern. And the green is our stressed syllable, the yellow is our unstressed syllables and unstressed words, and of course the red means I'm finished talking, your turn. It's the end of a sentence. We're going to first match our pattern to our little phrases, and then we'll find another phrase that also matches it. We have our first one, which is da 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 Da, da, da. What pattern does that match? Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Number four. What time is it? What time is it? And that's the same pattern as this one. He wants to come. He wants to come. He wants to come. He wants to come. Great. Now let's do another one. We'll do the absolute easiest one just for fun. So this one is two words, so we know of course that's pattern one. So what is this one going to sound like? See ya, see ya, see ya. Yeah, great. And of course the other two word pattern that we can have is thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay, that's not hard at all, right? <laughs> the next one is um, the next easiest. We have three. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Can you find uh, the other phrase that has a pattern of three notes? You're kidding. You're kidding. Great. So that's quite easy. You just need a little minute to think about it. Pause the video and find the other ones that match the patterns 
and that also match the other phrases. So pause the video now, do that, and then we can look at the combinations together. Okay, great. I hope you found the combinations that match the uh, patterns and the phrases. So what did you get for this one? This one's easy because we kind of did it already, <laughs> but I'm from China. I'm from China, right? And the match for that one is Where's the restroom? Where's the restroom? Right. And how about this one? Of course, there's only one left, so this is easy. I want to get a job. I want to get a job. I want to get a job. Right. And the matching one to that is he has to buy a car. He has to buy a car, right? And you can notice, you see that want is a verb, get, verb, job, noun, same thing here, has, verb, buy, verb, car, noun, all the other words are not stressed and they get linked together. And you can especially notice that when we say want to becomes wanna. I wanna get a, I wanna get a job. So let's keep going and we'll just touch on one more thing and then we'll look at the example questions for the discussion. When you have a yes, no question, that's the only time when your voice goes up. For information questions, who, what, where, when, why, how, your voice goes down at the end. But when you're asking a yes, no question, your voice goes up. Is it Tuesday? Is it Tuesday? That means you forgot what day it is. Is it Tuesday? I thought it was Monday. Oh, it's Tuesday. So when you genuinely don't know, the answer and you're asking a yes or no question, your voice goes up at the end. Here's an example. Do you want to come with me? Do you want to come with me? That means you really want the person to come with you and you're genuinely asking them. But as we saw before with intonation, if you have your voice going down, that can mean it's something different. Do you want to come with me? Means you have to come with me. I'm not really asking you. I'm telling you, come with me. Um, are these on sale? I hope. Would you like fries with that? Yes. Yes, you do. These are some yes, no questions. Voice goes up at the end. So let's practice some questions for the discussion. On your discussion, you've got list A and list B. We're going to practice a couple of questions from each one. So our first one is this. Look for nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and negatives. When you find a single syllable word like mean, that's a verb, so that's easy. We know that's stressed. Then look for any adjectives. If the adjective or, inf or important word has more than one syllable, you are going to figure out what the stress syllable is, and that's your high note. The non-stress syllables are going to be that middle note. So, what does it mean to be a global citizen? What does it mean to be a global citizen? What does it mean to be a global citizen? Can you feel that? Can you say that? with me? What does it mean to be a global citizen? What does it mean to be a global citizen? And all the other syllables and words are not stressed. Right. Next one. Now, this one is not an information question. It's a yes, no question. So at the end, your voice is going to go up. 
And you're going to take a second, look for the nouns, the verbs, the adjectives, adverbs, and negatives, and see if you can find out where the stress is going to go for this question. Did you get it? Would you be willing to pay extra for fair trade products? Would you be willing to pay extra for fair trade products? Would you be willing to pay extra for fair trade products? All the other words and syllables are not stressed. Great, next one. Find all the stresses. Only the syllables, not the words. Did you get it? What qualities are typical of global citizens? What qualities are typical of global citizens? What qualities are typical of global citizens? All the other ones are not stressed. And here again we have a yes no question. Voice goes up. Did you get it? Should universities and colleges sell fair trade products? Should universities and colleges sell fair trade products? All the rest are not stressed. And our last one, why or why not? Your voice is going down. Great, so I hope that was helpful so that when you are speaking, you'll be able to make your voice convey the meaning that you want. And this will also help you when you're listening to know that people don't stress all the words. They don't stress all the syllables. So if you manage to get the meaning, but maybe not every word, that's okay. You got the meaning and that's what's important. One last little thing just for fun. I want to talk just very quickly about how important it is uh, to use our intonation and how that can change the meaning of something. It can cause misunderstanding sometimes and it is as important as your choice of words. So here's a fun little example. I didn't say we should invite him. If we stress each of these different words like I didn't say we should invite him, how does that change the meaning? I didn't say we should invite him. That means that somebody else said we should invite him, but I didn't. What about, I didn't say we should invite him. I didn't say we should invite him. That means, that's not what I said. You didn't understand me. I didn't say we shouldn't invite him. What about, I didn't say we shouldn't invite him. I didn't say we shouldn't invite him. That means I thought that, but I didn't actually say it. <laughs> what about, I didn't say we should invite him. I didn't say we should invite him. That means that somebody else should invite him, but not us. I didn't say we should invite him. Oh, I didn't say we should invite him. Oh, kind of means I said we shouldn't invite him and now he's here. <laughs> Maybe not the nicest one. How about this one? I didn't say we should invite him. I didn't say we should invite him. It means I said we should do something else, but not invite him. How about this one? I didn't say we should invite him. I didn't say we should invite him. Means we should invite somebody else, but not him. Wrong guy. Okay, that's a little bit of fun. I hope that that's helpful.